Happy Wednesday, Saints. Welcome to a Good Word Bible Study. I'm Dr. Dainty Jones. I serve as Apostle of the House That Dignity Built Ministries, and I have the honor of teaching tonight. So if you got your Bible with you, I will be using um, Matthew 17, verses 1 through 13. That's Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. Um, and now we will have Elder Roy Glover to give us an opening prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, once again, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Father, for watching over us, protecting us from week to week, yes. keeping us together and making it stronger, making us stronger, as we grow in your word, we thank you for your word, Father, thank you. because we know your word is the truth, yes. and the truth will keep us free. I ask special blessings for each member that's present here tonight. Each member that's listening, I ask the Lord to bless and keep them. I ask special blessings, Father, for the one who will bring the lesson tonight. I ask that you be with her, stand in the midst as she take us through this lesson. I ask it all in your son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful prayer. All right. Well, I'm going to now share our praise song for the night, and then I'll present the message. Hello and welcome to the House That Dignity Built Ministries. And here is one of our praise moments. Um, if you'll be um, in prayer with me as I deliver this praise to the Lord, I would be much appreciative. This song is called Change Me. Change me, oh God. Make me more love. Change me, oh God, wash me through and through, just create in me a clean heart so that I Worship you, change me, oh God. 
words that like you, Lord, change me. Oh, change me. Hey, oh, change my Lord, change in the midnight, change. Oh, change. A one, Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Thank you so much for allowing me to share that praise with you today. And uh, now I'd like to start our lesson for today. So again, we're coming from Matthew 17, verses 1 through 13. So I'll, like, I'll start first by reading our scripture, and then I'll share the name of our sermon with you. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, to be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. Thanks be to God for the reading and the hearing of his mighty word. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I am calling this message Six Days, Three Trinities, and a Transfiguration. Amen. So let's look at verse one, as it displays a timeline for Jesus's action. Six days after Jesus tells the disciples that he will die and he rebukes Peter for trying to correct him for saying this. 
Um, so this is part of the timeline. It was six days after we what we studied just last week. So this time period is almost a week after Jesus told the disciples what he did in Matthew 16, verse 28. And it and that word reads, Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And so as evidence of this statement, three of the disciples were able to see that Moses and Elijah had not tasted death in the same way as those who will not enter God's kingdom. Since God is no respecter of person, what he did for Moses and Elijah, he can do for us. Now, I'd like to jump to our transfiguration section and then double back to the explanation of the three trinities that I mentioned in my message's title. Transfiguration means a complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state of radiant glory. Jesus experienced a distinct change in appearance while on Mount Tabor, which means a height or an encampment. This shows his divine glory nature. The transfiguration moment is so important that it is, it is covered well in three of the other gospel books. And so it shows up in Mark 9, uh, verses 2 and 3. It shows up in Luke 9, verses 28 through 36. And then Apostle Paul alludes to it um, when he talks about the eternal glory of the Lord, um, even though he doesn't completely cover the transfiguration moment. But he does mention it because he witnessed it. You might remember that Moses, while delivering the Ten Commandments, also had a shining face. But Jesus's transfigured state was stronger than Moses's glorified appearance when descending from the top of Mount Sinai. Here's the scriptural evidence for Jesus's transfiguration. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. That's what it says in verse two. See, when Moses returned from Mount Sinai, his face was shining. The sign, and, and Sinai actually means to shine or the moon or a bush in Hebrew. And in Exodus 34 and 29, we, we see that there's a difference in his appearance. It reads, now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone when he talked with him. So while both of these men had a shining face, Jesus' face shone like the sun. This would mean that people would have had trouble even looking straight at Jesus for too long, just as one has trouble looking directly at the sky. The Israelites were able to look directly at Moses while he was showing a reflection of God's glory on his face from having been in God's presence. Now also notice that Jesus' clothes also changed color to white, while Moses' clothes did not change at all. So that gives us a sense of how special the transfigurative moment was that Jesus showed to the disciples as he spoke to Moses and Elijah. 
So now let's take a look at the three trinities mentioned in this um, in these verses. So in addition to mentioning the happenings after the six days and Jesus's transfiguration, this passage mentions three trinities. The first trinity that we see are Jesus's disciples, Peter, James, and John. This trinity of soon-to-be apostles represented the foundation of the Christian church and zealous evangelists of the faith. Peter was Jesus's rock upon which he would build his church. And even in verse four of our text for tonight, Peter offers to build when he says to Jesus, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He is giving Jesus evidence that he will build for him. Now, in addition to being his rock or bringing his rock, Jesus invites his sons of thunder, James and John. In Mark 3 and 17, Jesus gave them this nickname. And sons of thunder comes from the word Boanerges, which means sons of commotion. And commotion means to displace and to make turmoil, but it also means to move together. James means to replace, and John means God's grace. So one can see that Jesus's nickname for them is useful in showing that while evangelizing, James will show others to replace their works of wrongdoing with righteous ones. And John could speak about receiving God's grace to begin anew. They could shout out about God's love for his people to convince converts to join the kingdom of God. And once they are in the kingdom, Peter can show them how to build a church. This trinity shows the power of man's moral glory seeds of humility, faith, and repentance. And we discussed these glory seeds during our um, sermon called Glory Seeds for a Glory Harvest. Now, the second trinity in the text is of Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Now, it's interesting that Moses appears right after Jesus has fed thousands of people. Since Moses witnessed God send manna or bread of heaven while they were in the wilderness. Additionally, I've already mentioned the similarity of them both being radiant while on mountaintops. These parallels are interesting, but perhaps even more powerful is the reason that Moses and Elijah were with Jesus. They were discussing his upcoming death. Luke 9 verses 30 and 31 is where one finds this narrative. It reads, two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Elijah departed before Jesus did and did so while still alive in a chariot of fire that was carried away in a whirlwind. Jesus tells the, the apostles that John the Baptist is the spirit of Elijah the prophet. So while Jesus is the new Moses, John the Baptist is the new Elijah. And together they fulfill the law and the prophecy of the Old Testament that promises the arrival of a Messiah 
who would die for our sins so that we may have eternal life. Just as Elijah entered heaven without being dead, Jesus did the same when he ascended as told in the book of Acts. Now, the third trinity that we see is of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it might be hard to understand that we're actually seeing the trinity in the text. Because this is how it reads in verse 5. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. In this case, the bright cloud is the Holy Spirit. The spirit that moves like the wind, but isn't the wind. The spirit that descended upon Jesus's shoulder at his baptism as a dove. The voice that speaks from the cloud is Jehovah, God the Father. He announces to the group how pleased he still is with Jesus, just as he did when Jesus was baptized. This group, this trinity, is the most important of the three trinities because it has all of the members of the Holy Trinity in place. It is the same trinity that created man in Genesis when we see the name Elohim. So it's the trinity of creation. It is the trinity of rebirth and purification because we see the trinity at Jesus's baptism. And finally, it is the trinity of ascension and eternal glory because God arranged for us to be reunited with him where we can reside in his glorification. Isn't this good news? Aren't you honored that God loves you like he does? Aren't you grateful that he forgives us for our shortcomings? Aren't you glad that he makes himself available for comfort, for joy, for peace, for rest? for abundance, for patience, for repentance, for grace, for mercy, for favor, for chastisement, for love, for correction, and for sacrifice. This truly is great news. And this is the conclusion of my message called Six Days, Three Trinities, and a transfiguration. Amen. And thank you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. And now it's time for our takeaways. Who would like to go first? Uh, that was a good lesson uh, because of the transfiguration was showing us when he was of uh, shining, uh, he had changed his appearance, and uh, so uh, much light in his clothing as well as in his face. Uh, it was showing that he wasn't uh, like a man; he was God, and he was he needed to be worshipped. And uh, not like uh, Peter wanted to build the uh, things in the honor, three things in the honor of each one of the men. But Jesus should have been worshipped at that time uh, by the disciples. I knew they fell down to worship, or uh, kneeled down like you were saying, to, to worship them, him. And but uh, he was uh, showing that he was way more than uh, just a man, even though he was a man and God. 
because he was at that time he was showing that that when he shined like that because uh, you can't look at uh, water like you can. It, and I say maybe that's why you can't look when you were telling us about how bright it was. You couldn't hardly look at him good. I say, oh, that's the reason because he shines and you can't hardly look natural at the sun like that too much. So uh, I was saying that's the reason you can't see God in the face because he uh, shines so. Uh, that's the way I was thinking when uh, you were teaching about the uh, Must have been hard to see Jesus. Yes, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about the three uh, trinities until you pointed it out about the ones with uh, the three disciples. Then you had Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Then you had God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That's my takeaway. Thank you so much for your rich takeaway. Amen. Who would like to go next? You know, I'll go ahead and I'll actually go next. Um, you know, your title by itself is really powerful. When you look at six days and you said, of course, three trinities and a transfiguration. And, you know, it is so amazing that you brought the depth of that out of the scriptures there when you talked about in terms of the three trinities, because I never uh, saw the three trinities before. And your title, like I said, is so powerful that, you know, six represents also the uh, number of man and man's effort. Three represent the number of, of spirit, if you will, or relationship with God. And whenever six meets three will always turn into a transfiguration. So I love it in terms of where your title is actually out there. Very powerful message there. So thank you so much for all the studying that you've done uh, to, uh, for this week's lesson. Remarkable. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your encouraging word. Amen. I give credit to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and do we have one more takeaway? Uh, yes. I do my takeaway. Awesome. Uh, first of all, like Honey said, you did a good job on the lesson. Amen. But but with this lesson, my takeaway, what it have to do with my takeaway. Is that you know a, a lot of us have visions, dreams. You know, we be eager to tell somebody what has happened in our life. But in Jesus' case, he didn't want nobody to know. Yes. That's why he gave his disciples the order not to mention it to nobody and tell them what they witness. But it just goes to show us how powerful God is. He can speak from heaven above and the people down here can hear his voice. Now, that's power, and we do know that God has all power, and we thank him for his power. That's my Amen. takeaway. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for bringing up um, verse 9. Um, in fact, that's a great transition to take us to our discussion about the key verses. So I wanted to ask you all your thoughts about our including verse 
verses two and three. And then five and then nine. So verses two and three, there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. And then verse five reads, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased and listen to him. And then verse 9 reads, As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. So are we comfortable with those scriptures for yes. our um, key verses? Yes. Yes. Awesome, awesome. All right. Thank you, thank you. Okay, wonderful. And so now that leads us then to our um, closing prayer. Um, Dr. Green, will I be putting you on the spot to ask you to give us a closing prayer? Would that be okay? All right, well, that is okay. Then I'll give the closing prayer and then I'll make announcements to our listeners. Father God in heaven, thank you so much for this opportunity to be in your word. For we know that when we are in your word, we are in your presence. Hmm, what a magnificent presence you have, Father God. Hmm, the way you are able to be so full of light and goodness, the way your glory is so much that you cover our eyes so you can pass by, we can stand in the cleft of a rock. But just to be in your presence is enough so that people can see the shine that you leave on us. People are able to tell that we have the light. People are able to sometimes taste the salt of our words, Lord God. I, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you do. I thank you. I, I, I thank you for being Alpha and Omega. I thank you, Father God. I, I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your glory. Um, you showed us that you have divine glory and we're to work on our moral glory. And you showed us how your creation is your natural glory. So we're so grateful, Father God. We're grateful for the Trinity. We are so grateful. We're, we're grateful for the presence of your days, how you used your time. We can even learn lessons there about how time can be used, Father God. So thank you for modeling appropriate behavior to us. Um, we ask that you bless the sick and the shut-in, that you um, act as Jehovah Rapha and heal, Father God. Um, we thank you for covering, um, for covering us as we are moving about um, in this dangerous landscape in which we we live, Father God, you are the hedge of protection around us, and we are so grateful we don't take it for granted. And we offer this prayer through your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Well, now I'll share um, for our viewers our webpage again so that um, you can know how to reach out to us. If you have any ministerial needs um, and you are in need of a minister, whether it is from uh, Christian coaching, whether you have prayer requests or weddings or homegoing ceremonies, whether you need a mediator, we would be happy to serve you in that capacity. All you have to do is click on the About Us page or the prayer wall page, and you'll be able to send an email to us, um, letting us know what you need. Also, thank you for um, beginning to uh, purchase the journals that we have on Amazon. 
Uh, we really appreciate your supporting our ministry in this way. Um, just a reminder for some and um, new information for others. Um, one of the ways we used the money um, in 2023 was we had a day of um, where we had a random act of kindness. And um, so you might remember that where we were able to take some cash and put it in a purse at a store and we were actually able to meet a grandmother and her granddaughter and she expressed her gratitude to us in the ministry. Uh, so when you purchase these journals, you are being such a blessing to others. Uh, so we thank you in advance uh, for what you are going to do um, in your Christian walk right along with us. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, and thank you so much for the views, for the praise videos, um, and also our daily prayer videos. So again, I am Dr. Dainty Jones, Apostle of the House That Dignity Built Ministries. Until next time, blessings, blessings, blessings. Amen.